Hi, my name is Alex with Ape Tech Tech Tutorials, and today we're going to be talking about five things that I wish I knew when I first started using Jira. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel, drop a like if you get any value out of this video, and if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, let me know in the comment section below. I've been using Jira for almost six years now, pretty much six years, starting Halloween of this year. And so I've been using it day in, day out from a professional level, from a personal level. And so I've gotten to get to know the tool really, really well. And as I look back, I realized that there's a lot of new people to Jira. And I got to thinking, what would I want to tell me if I were starting to use Jira for the first time today, given what I know over the last six years of my career using Jira? So today I'm going to be talking about five things that I wish I would have known when I first started using Jira. So let's talk about number five. We're actually gonna go in reverse order, so make sure you stay tuned and watch the entire video so you hear my number one reason. So number five, just because you can customize something in Jira doesn't mean you should. This is something that I wish I would have learned at the beginning of my career because when I first started using Jira, I customized the heck out of it. And while Jira's gift to the world is that you can customize it, it's also the curse. Infinitely being able to customize Jira makes Jira so much more complex. And so if I were starting all over, I would try to make my processes be as non-customizable as possible so that I don't have to customize Jira. Not customizing the tool over the top goes a really long way. And I'm not talking about like adding custom fields and stuff like that. That's fine, but there's a line. There's a line in the sand where too much customization is just way too much. And some people go really, really crazy with this. And I know that at the beginning, I used to try to go a lot more crazier. I had a manager once though tell me, hey, we need to not customize because it just becomes really, really hard to maintain. So if I were to do this all over again, I would hold the line and try not to customize as much as possible. Number four, if you're just starting to learn Jura, this might seem like a very overwhelming mountain to you. You might just be totally scared by the number of resources out there and just all the different things you can do with the tool. So my advice here, if I were to be doing this all over again, is learn just enough to be dangerous. Don't try to get a PhD in Jira in your first week. Just learn enough of what you need to do your job. Gradually, you will learn more and more things, but be patient. I've been using this tool for six years to get to the level at where I'm at today. So don't expect to be an expert in just a week. If anything, just continuously use the tool and learn just enough so that you can do the task at hand and then gradually just keep adding and adding and adding. Number three, and this one kind of piggies backs off of that last statement, but if you're on a Jira premium subscription, at least with the cloud, you should absolutely take advantage of having a sandbox. The sandbox is very beneficial in helping you learn and in helping you make mistakes, helping you go full Miss Frizzle where you get messy, make mistakes and just try things in a sandbox in a controlled environment where you can actually make mistakes without having negative consequences to the rest of your users or your teams. So I would recommend if I were starting this all over, I actually would have pushed and been a very, very strong advocate to learn and start in a sandbox first so that I can get my feet wet so that I can try things. There's certain things that you just can't learn all in one shot and sometimes you just need to investigate. You need to let your curiosity take you places and you just need to try things and know that there's a fail safe button that can easily revert things back for you. So I would really, really push, start in a sandbox, get very comfortable with working in a sandbox and just learn as much as you can in that sandbox. Number two, when I first jumped into Jira, having a single assignee was a bit of a showstopper. It took me a while to learn the value of what only having one assignee means. And I know that a lot of teams, when they first come into Jira, their initial reaction is, hey, I need to assign this to a group or to a bunch of different people. And my reaction to them is always, why? You should only have one person accountable for any given thing. When you have two, three, four, or more people accountable, for one item, that accountability goes away. It gets diluted because they don't communicate well with each other. So I really, really love that Jira only allows you to have one assignee. And if I were to go back, I would have pushed less 
and done that mental shift, that mental just changing of the way I approach my problems to ensuring that everything that I structured would be around one and only one person. Unfortunately, it took me three and a half, almost four years to learn the value of having one and only one person responsible for something because you can drive tremendous results when you have one person accountable for the delivery of an item. And so if you are in the camp of you're trying to assign to a group, if you want multiple people to be responsible for something, I would push back and say no. That is one lesson that I wish I would have learned earlier. Fortunately, it took me like four years to learn it. And Jira can be customized so that you can have a group or multiple people be responsible for a task. But I would push very, very strongly for only one and only one person. And now, finally, the number one thing I wish I would have known. And this kind of goes back with the very first thing. But I am now such a firm believer in the KISS principle. The keep it simple, stupid principle right? Jira can be customized so much. You can do so much with the tool. But one area where so many teams struggle and one area where I struggled at the beginning was having a very customized and very rigid workflow. There is value in having a simple workflow for your statuses in Jira, for your board. The more complex, I understand that some teams need a lot more hand-holding. I understand that some teams can't read in between the lines, but I assure you that in the long run, it is better to keep it simple. It is better to just simplify your process, simplify your workflow, simplify the way your teams communicate with each other because it will make a drastic difference. Because you have a complex workflow doesn't mean that you're doing great. It probably, to me, it means the opposite. It means that if your workflow has to be so complex, every step laid out, all of these restrictions, different paths, different transitions that only certain members can do, different fields that are being required to be filled out, that just signals me the biggest red flag that your process, that your workflow is overly complex. And if something's complex, I guarantee you, somebody in your team is struggling. And when team members are struggling, performance is struggling as well. So if you wanna drastically improve your performance, drastically improve the adoption of your team's using and being excited about using Jira, keep your processes and keep your Jira customization as simple as possible. Just the things that you actually need to actually be effective. Don't go crazy just because you can do it and just add all this extra manushka to your processes. Okay, so that would be my number one thing that I've learned over the years is when in doubt, keep it simple because the more complex this thing gets, the more communication problems we have, the more barriers we have, the more silos we create, and it just becomes a nightmare all around. So try to keep Jira as simple as possible, your process as simple as possible, your documentation, your training, everything as simple as possible so that anybody can feel comfortable learning the tool. Because at the end of the day, a tool is just a tool. Jira is just Jira, and you could use any other tool in the world in lieu of Jira. But what I like to tell people is that because Jira can be simplified and because you have a people problem that can be simplified, Jira just naturally falls right into place and becomes everybody's favorite tool. But it can also very quickly, the ties can turn on you. And if you over complex your thing, you're going to lose people and you gonna lose adoption. And, and most importantly, make sure you communicate your whys. If you are going to deviate from keeping it simple and you're going to add some complexities, make sure those complexities are explained. Make sure people buy into the purpose. Don't just add complexity for the sake of, I need complexity. When people aren't bought in, when they don't believe, when they don't understand the why, the reasoning behind your architectural decisions of how you implement Jira, that's when you start to lose people. That's when people start playing devil's advocate. That's when the adoption rates go down. And that's when people just put up walls. They put up defenses and they try to shy away from the tool and then people just end up blaming Agile or they blame the tool. So whenever possible, keep it simple. That's the number one lesson that I've learned in the last six years. So anyways, that's it for this video. If you found value, please let me know by liking the video. If you haven't subscribed right now, what you're waiting for, hit that subscribe button. And if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or anything you want to share, let me know in the comment section below. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next one.